When we carry out research using patient data, we try to use data containing as little information as possible that could identify an individual person. Sounds simple, but it isn't always. Removing information that could identify a person is often called de-identifying data. Data where all information that could identify an individual has been removed is sometimes called anonymized data. Like news reports about COVID cases, where statistical information from many people is combined. Data like this does not have to be protected in the same way as identifiable data. There are many levels of de-identified data and how much protection is needed. The more detailed the information needed, the greater the risk of being able to identify someone and the greater the level of protection needed. When looking at patterns in disease, a researcher is likely to need to know things like patient's age and medical treatments. If you strip data of this kind of information, it would be difficult to ask important questions. For instance, how could you see if there is an environmental factor in a certain cancer without knowing where people live? So we need to find ways of making sure researchers can still analyze the information. Of course, you could de-identify data by removing information such as names and postcodes. However, you could still indirectly identify people by linking up information from their health record, such as occupation or age, with information from other sources like news reports. One solution is to use what are called pseudonyms or replacement identifiers, which don't reveal a patient's real-world identity. A key is always kept in the data so it can be unlocked. For the patient Rosemary Supergirl, you might remove her name and pseudonymize her NHS number. Only the NHS trust looking after her data can use the key to unlock the pseudonym and reveal her identity. And there's another solution. Information can be put into groups or bins to make it harder to identify people like using age ranges instead of date of birth or date ranges instead of a specific day. Researchers can still look for trends, but there is less of a chance they could identify individual people. Take Rosemary Supergirl. You can use generalized descriptions of things like her occupation and education. You couldn't identify her, but you could compare the generalized information with the same kind of information from other people and see if things like age and occupation may be factors in certain diseases. Even so, sometimes this information is too vague and a decision needs to be made about how much identifiable information has to be included and so how much protection must be put in place. But how do you decide? Well, it is often a question of weighing up what information is needed to answer a question and how urgent that question is against the risk of someone being identified and what measures could be put in place to protect the data. That leaves us with more questions like, how do you balance these risks and needs? And are there other ways of keeping data safe?